this week, the Council of Cardinals makes more changes. The Vatican Bank has a new director, and we celebrate the Immaculate Conception. Hello and welcome to Vatican Connections. This week the Council of Cardinals has been meeting and we have details on that. The Council met from Tuesday to Thursday at the Santa Marta Guest House. We have learned that the eight Cardinals began reviewing each and every Vatican department. They also met briefly with the new Secretary of State, Pietro Parolin, to wish him well in his new role and to get to know him. On Thursday, Cardinal Sean O'Malley of Boston spoke to journalists and announced that the Pope has decided to create a commission for the protection of minors. Among the responsibilities of the commission will be to, uh, to study the, the present programs in place for protection of, of children and to uh, come up with suggestions for new initiatives on the part of the Curia in collaboration with the bishops and the Episcopal conferences and religious superiors and conferences of religious superiors. Uh, an, among the kinds of things that the commission might be doing would be, as I say, looking at guidelines for the protection of children, studying uh, programs of formation uh, of priests, catechists, all of those teachers, uh, seminarians, uh, religious, those who are working with children, uh, studying the protocols for uh, safe environment, uh, uh, codes of professional uh, conduct. The Commission will also identify people who are best suited to take on the task of actually implementing these new programs on the ground. Pope Francis will issue a legal document to officially create this commission and name the members of the new body. The Council of Cardinals is scheduled to meet again in February, right before the consistory to create new cardinals. The Vatican libraries have taken a huge step forward into the digital era. The Bodleian University Library at Oxford and the Vatican Library are working together to put digital versions of their manuscripts online. The announcement was made this week and a joint website was launched where scholars and history buffs can consult manuscripts which include one of 50 existing copies of Gutenberg's Bible. The website also features a blog with posts about different restoration and preservation techniques and videos featuring commentary from prominent scholars. You can check it out at bav.bodleian.ox.ac.uk. Caritas International is kicking off a wave of prayer to raise awareness about the fact that there is enough food on this earth to feed everyone, but people still go hungry. Caritas says we could end global hunger and malnutrition by 2025 and they want everyone to work towards this. Pope Francis himself will kick off the wave of prayer on Tuesday, December 10th. Now the wave actually starts in Samoa and Pope Francis will participate by video message. Now, if you followed the news at all this week, you probably saw headlines proclaiming that the Holy See is dodging questions about sex abuse by priests. The Holy See is a permanent observer to the United Nations and has signed on to a Convention for the Rights of the Child, basically an international agreement to end violence against children, child poverty, abuse, and child trafficking. All the countries who signed the treaty are supposed to report on their progress in implementing these standards every five years. The UN reviewed the Holy See's latest report and posed a series of questions. Among them, the UN wants to know if the Holy See has carried out an investigation into the Magdalene laundries in Ireland and the outcome of such an investigation, how abusers were handled, what kind of assistance was offered to victims, and if a study has been done about the long-term effects on victims. 
The UN has also asked the Holy See for details on every reported case of sexual abuse it has ever investigated, including details on what happened to the alleged abuser, what medical, psychological and social assistance was given to victims. The UN specifically wants to know if accused priests were removed from situations where they would be in contact with children. The United Nations has also asked if the Holy See has taken measures to eliminate sex stereotyping from textbooks in Catholic schools. At first glance, this sounds like reasonable information for a human rights committee who wants to know how well this treaty has been implemented. But remember, the Holy See as an observer state at the UN is actually the Vatican and the different departments not every single Catholic institution in the world. Some of these questions refer to the whole Catholic Church and every single one of its priests, schools, hospitals, and other institutions, which is very different from being a nation state. It also assumes that the Vatican controls what happens in every single institution, school, and hospital around the world. The Vatican also can't put anyone on trial so it's not quite as easy as going back through court records to find out what happened. Now, you might be thinking of Paolo Gabriele, the former papal butler who was accused of stealing papal documents. He was put on trial at the Vatican because his crime occurred inside the nation known as the Holy See. So the Holy See has responded to the UN clarifying these things, and we'll wait to see what happens. Of course, this hasn't stopped headline writers from saying that the Vatican is trying to avoid the question. And finally, if you've ever been to Rome, you may have visited the Basilica of St. Paul's outside the walls. And you might recall that one of the key features of this basilica is the portraits of the popes on the wall along the ceiling. The portrait of every pope from Peter right up to today is in this basilica and this week the official mosaic of Pope Francis that will go up on that wall was revealed to the public. It is expected to go up shortly so if you're visiting Rome in the next little while don't forget to visit St. Paul's outside the walls and look up. When a man has done what he considers to be his duty to his people in his country, he can rest in peace. I believe I have made that effort. And that is therefore why I will sleep for the eternity. After dropping an 84-page exhortation on the world last week, Pope Francis appears to be resting. Appears to be. That's the key word. Last Sunday, Pope Francis went to the parish of St. Cyril to celebrate Mass. He met with parishioners, heard confessions, and during the Mass, he confirmed several young people. Catholic News Service has a look at that visit. Ricordate sempre questo, la vita è un cammino, è un cammino, un cammino per incontrare Gesù, alla fine è sempre, un cammino dove non incontriamo Gesù, non è un cammino cristiano, è proprio del cristiano incontrare sempre Gesù, guardarlo. 
lasciarsi guardare da Gesù perché Gesù ci guarda con amore ci ama tanto ci vuole tanto bene e ci guarda sempre On Monday, Pope Francis met with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. They met for 25 minutes, and according to the Vatican, the Pope and the Prime Minister spoke about the complex situation in the Middle East and expressed the hope that negotiations might resume between Israelis and Palestinians. Pope Francis also met with bishops from Holland on their ad limina visit. They shared their concerns with him and he talked with them informally. They had a bit of an informal chat, but he also gave them a text copy of some remarks he would have made to them if it was a more formal setting. He did urge them to help victims in their country of sexual abuse as they continue in their healing process. And Wednesday was the general audience, Catholic News Service, has more on that. This, cosa significa resuscitare? La resurrezione, la resurrezione di tutti noi, eh? Avrà nell'ultimo giorno, alla fine del mondo, ad opera dell'onnipotenza di Dio, il quale restituirà la vita al nostro corpo riuniendolo all'anima in forza della resurrezione di Gesù. E questa è la spiegazione fondamentale. Perché Gesù è risorto, noi risusciteremo. Noi abbiamo speranza nella resurrezione perché Lui ci ha aperto la porta. Ci ha aperto la porta a questa risurrezione. Noi crediamo che Gesù è risorto, che Gesù è vivo in questo momento. Ma voi credete che Gesù è sta vivo, che è vivo? Ah, non credete? Credete o non credete? E se Gesù è vivo, voi pensate che Gesù ci lascerà morire e mai resuscitare a noi? No! Lui ci aspetta e perché Lui è risorto, la forza della Sua risurrezione ci risusciterà a tutti noi. Sunday, December 8th, is, of course, the Feast of the Immaculate Conception. Now, it's been moved to Monday in some places, but Rome will celebrate it on Sunday. Pope Francis was scheduled to take part in the annual crowning of Mary at the Spanish Steps. And there were only a couple of appointments to go through this week. The head of the Congregation for Catholic Education, Cardinal Zenon Grocholewski, has been confirmed in his job. Now remember, during the Sede Vacante period in March, all the heads of Vatican departments lost their jobs and then were temporarily reinstated by Pope Francis. Now Cardinal Grocholewski is confirmed in his position, but he is 74 and just one year away from the mandatory retirement age. Archbishop Angelo Zani has also been confirmed as secretary of that same congregation. And the Vatican Bank has a new director. The oversight commission that runs the administration of the bank has appointed Rolando Maranci. Now you'll remember, just before the end of Pope Benedict's pontificate, Ernst von Freiburg was named president of the Institute for Works of Religion, which is the formal name for the bank. Until now, von Freiburg has also been acting as the bank's director, with Maranci functioning as his deputy. Maranci worked for BNL for many years before moving to the Promontory Group. And you'll recall the Vatican Bank hired the Promontory Group to evaluate its holdings and its practices, which is how Maranci arrived on the scene. Vatican Connections is interactive. Send us your questions or comments by Facebook, Twitter, email, or post. Via email, send comments to info at saltandlighttv.org. And by post, send letters to 114 Richmond Street East, Toronto, Ontario, M5C1P1, Canada. 
Finally, this week we celebrate the Feast of the Immaculate Conception. Now, in Rome, the church has a very special annual tradition to celebrate this. Everyone gathers at the Spanish Steps to crown Mary along with the Pope. And we're going to take a look at that tradition and how it started. The Spanish Steps were designed in the 1700s, reportedly to link the Spanish Embassy in the lower part of the plaza to the Church of the Trinity on the hill above. The plaza is also home to several other important monuments, the Bernini Fountain shaped like a sinking boat, the offices of the Vatican's Congregation for the Propagation of the Faith, the Spanish Embassy to the Holy See, and a monument dedicated to the dogma of the Immaculate Conception. Popular tradition had always held that Mary was conceived without sin. A feast celebrating that was marked in various places. But it was only in 1476 that Pope Sixtus decreed a feast day for the whole Latin Church to celebrate Mary's Immaculate Conception. It still, however, was not officially part of the Church's teaching. In 1708, Pope Clement IX declared the feast day a holy day of obligation. Finally, in 1854, Pope Pius IX declared Mary's Immaculate Conception to be a dogma or teaching of the Church. To commemorate the declaration, a column was erected in 1856 and topped with a statue of Mary. The column had been found under a monastery in Campo Marzio in 1777, while the statue was specially commissioned of Giuseppe Obici. The base of the nearly 12-meter tall column features statues of the prophets Moses, David, Isaiah, and Ezekiel. 220 firefighters helped inaugurate the monument in 1857, and since 1923, Roman firefighters have crowned the statue with flowers, and since 1953, the Pope is present for the ceremony. Benedicat vos omnipotens Deus, Pater et Filius et Spiritus Sanctus. That's it for Vatican Connections. You can get daily updates by following us on Twitter at Vatican Connections or check our blog. From everyone here, thanks for watching and see you next time.